in those days of Caesar Augustus, a decree was issued that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census. And everyone went to his own town to register. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, for there was no room for them in the inn. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, watch, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy for all that will be for people. Today in the town of David a Savior has born. He is Christ the Lord. This is your sign. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. A word from the Lord in the house of the Lord. Shepherds in a field, a great light, voices, terror, I imagine it was. Have you ever been terrified? Just something so abrupt and so frightening that you just froze. Maybe it was as you were looking at an accident about to happen. Or maybe it was seeing snowdrifts 12 feet high. <laughs> I was assigned to a sales territory one time that included Upper Michigan and I was so impressed by the houses in Upper Michigan that had porches on the second floor with no steps. <laughs> After I'd been there long enough to realize it was not something unusual, it was expediency, because that's where the snow was. That's how they got in and out of their house all winter. I got trapped in the Upper Peninsula and the, and the Copper Peninsula because I didn't have snow tires and they would not the state police would not let me on the highway without snow tires so I spent two days in copper you know, Kennesaw which is not a very pl good place to spend two days seemed like a week to me but terror opens our heart to things terror makes us realize how mortal we are terror makes us freeze where we are and, and look for escape, look for something that will set us free. When terror grips your heart, when you're done with that incident, you hurt everywhere because every muscle tensed, every muscle focused, everything was focused on what it was that was frightening you. And these poor shepherds who knew nothing were out in the middle of nowhere and God came to them. Oh, came in the form of an angel who spoke. I'm not sure. Well, I better not say that here. Cause somebody will remember. I know you can't rat me out anymore, but <laughs> still got to be a little careful. No, we, we hear voices. We wonder where they come from. We see things in our minds that may not have happened, but this did happen. It's been sworn to, it's been told about, it has been related often enough that we can be confident that to the shepherds in that place, there had to be a terrifying event. And yet their response was, what would you think? I'm gonna run and hide? No, they said, let's go tell somebody what we saw and what we heard. And that's what Christ has asked us to do ever since that one night, ever since his birth in a manger, is to go tell someone the good news. And you tell it every day with your life. 
You don't have to stand up here and preach. You don't have to go on missions to foreign countries. You don't have to do a lot of those kinds of things. But you have to live your life as if it's a sermon. See, that's why, that's why you may not know this, but that's why I tell jokes in my sermon. Because I want it to be just like my life. It's a joke too. See? <laughs> It's going to be, <clears throat> we're going to be fairly quick this morning. I don't want to be like the pastor who always talked for 19 minutes. And one day he got up and he preached for 19 minutes, for 38 minutes, for 57 minutes. And the crowd got restless. Finally, one of the elders said, enough. He stopped and everybody left. And the elder came up and said, what are you doing? He always preached 19 minutes. And he said, yes, when I start my sermon, I put a lozenge in my mouth. When it's gone, I know I'm done. Somebody put a button in my <laughs> lozenge. <laughs> well, with, with this voice I have today, it's going to be the opposite. We're not going to be up here very long. I'm sure it's not going to meet with any deep-seated deep regrets. But just a reminder that in every event in our life, whether it be terrifying or gratifying or horrifying or mystifying, Christ is there. And he asks you to tell the world about his life. Because his life is simply a life of giving himself in love. We have so many examples of that. We have so many couples. We have so many people who have loved, loved well and long. And they're a shining example of what Christ expects of us. If you're married a long time, you don't let the little things get in the way. You soon and soon understand that the only thing that's important in a married life are the, the big things. The important things like, does the toilet paper go under or over? <laughs> I mean, money and mortgages and cars and that all, that works out. But the big things are those which annoy. And even in annoying, we love each other. Christ became annoyed when they p turned his father's house into a thief of den, den of thieves. So being annoyed is okay. But he loved again. For on the cross he said, forgive them. They know not what you do. To the thief on his right, today he will join me in paradise. That's what the shepherds ran to Bethlehem to see and to begin to tell the world that Christ is here and Christ is love. And that's the message we have today. Christ is here. Christ is love. Christ is alive. Amen. We extinguish the Christ candle. And it's another 365 days till Christmas. That's only 340 days of shopping days left until Christmas. So hurry out there. But we may extinguish a candle will never extinguish his light, for his light is eternal. Go in peace. Amen.